the network service mesh, uh, the uh, dashboard, that that would be. Um, oh yeah, yeah. That'd be helpful. So we'll we'll start uh, we'll start there. Well, let's see. Where's the link? The link for it was on here. Let me just go to GitHub. Yeah, that's how I always yeah. find it. If you oh, can go to GitHub yeah. and click on project. Yeah. yeah. And oh, so we have um, we have a uh, document added on using CNI with uh, with Minikube that's been merged in, and we also have added a note for our usage on Dependabot. So. Um, so those are the two items that uh, that were that were added in. So, um, if anyone wants to to take a look at th those two pieces of documentation and see if they're clear and meet and um, uh, or if there's any questions about how this works, um, you know, those are those are the places to find it. Uh, so, in terms of things that have been uh, working on, we've we have a set of guidelines. Uh, this has been written by a person who goes by the Nick Dunehammer. And uh, can, can someone remind me whose uh, name is uh, is attached to Dunehammer? That's me, it's John. All right, so John's been working on a set of guidelines for extending network service mesh. So we'll discuss uh, more in detail about that. But there's a document that needs review. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll definitely- With regard to the we we'll, moved on to following the action item list to go through the action item review. Yes. Cool. Tom, could you click on the action item review tracking link? Oh, yeah. Okay. And that is where I'm really slow today. <clears throat> Not worries. enough coffee. Um, uh, there we go. Right there. Oops. Oh, there it is. Yep. That's it. That. So, um, so we have these guidelines that have been uh, that have been sent in. Uh, so we're going to take a look at it uh, on on our particular side. Uh, but if someone someone who's not as familiar uh, with how to extend out uh, network service mesh, we'd really appreciate if someone can take a look at it and see if you can make sense of it. That way, that um, we, you know we, we can make this approachable for for newcomers as well. So one of the comments from from Kyle was whether it be in and out of tree. That's the thing I added to the um, agenda. So I created, based on Kyle's sort of thoughts, I created a out of tree template that would, with a script, they'll basically create a complete tree with make files and everything using Sergey's simple data plane as a kind of a, a template. Oh. It's not quite all there. I think it needs a, a few more things, but um, it's one way of doing it, and it seems to kind of work. I think I've got a few bugs still yet to, to, to get out of it, but I can create you know, different data planes. And the only, all you need to do is really edit the proto file in the go file to get most of it working. Which are, what's really missing is some sample endpoints and how to, once you have a data plane, <clears throat> how to send traffic between machine over the data plane. So a little more examples around that would help. Ping. Never <laughs> <laughs> mind. I was thinking more of a YAML file, Tom. <laughs> you can send YAML files over a data plane too, no problem. <laughs> I think of a YAML file to create different <laughs> points and then connect them up. <laughs> so or, we can show a full end-to-end -end example of somebody saying, I want to use NSM to talk between these two endpoints. How would I do that? Yeah, that is good because I was try trying to figure out, so this should be easy, you know? And um, in theory it is, but yeah, that, that would be incredibly useful. Yeah, and, and these kind of uh, these kind of exercises and discussions like they, they help out a lot because it's it, from from a high level conceptual view like we can try to make a simple architecture, uh, but we know that the that there's a lot of detail that can 
they can get down when you're trying to actually implement it. And so one, one thing that we have to focus on and iterate on and, and where this can also really help is, uh, is on how do we make this approachable? Like if you're a newcomer, right. you, have, you want to create something on top of this that's new, you know, you, and you, the, two, the two types of experiences that we could provide is one where it's, it's easy, we have templates laid out, generators or anything that they need just to get started, type in the code that they, that they need, and then they're off and running. Or we could go the opposite direction and, you know, even with fantastic documentation, but just have so much detail in there and so many little things they have to take care of. And, you know, and it'll still be really difficult for them to approach and that'll limit our adoption. So I think also you think of, I said in the, in one of those to do, there's three audiences really to think about. One is, you know, you guys who are writing the infrastructure. Two is the guys who want to use infrastructure to write NSM plugins. And then three is the people who want to use the plugins to actually do something. And in some cases, it may all be the same people, but I think, I think thinking about those three different audiences and how to address the documentation and how to address the um, like how to's for that to, to um, Fred's point. And so it's, there's minimal friction. <clears throat> like if I just want to use NSM and somebody else has built a plugin, I should just write some YAML files. I, do, I should not need to do any, know anything else really. Is that maybe how to deploy a uh, daemon set? If I want to extend NSM, I shouldn't need to know too much about low level details, just enough to do um, a data plane or an endpoint. You, you, I, I totally agree with you. You want people to know just the things they care about. Um, I, I often talk about this as keeping things under the complexity curve. So if you picture like an X and Y axis, uh, where on one side you have, you know, on, on Y you have the complexity of, of what it takes to do a thing, and on X you have the complexity of the thing you're trying to do. There's a 45 degree line there that you need to make sure you always stay below, right? You always need to to stay below that 45 degree line at all times. Yeah, it's not always possible, you know. It's um, but uh, yeah, or try to try to get people uh, a way to at least navigate through it quickly with samples that they can that they can leverage and modify of things. Well, I think it's also yeah, speaking, it's speaking to the right audience. So you, you try to understand who you're trying to speak to rather than, you know, you're not trying to speak to somebody who's writing the low level plumbing when they're trying to use it versus, you know, vice versa. So you don't, you know, oversimplify over complex, you know, make it overly simple, overly complex. Separation, separation of concern is you know, think about, we think about it as well. Cool. So maybe what I'll do, I'll take that, the guidelines for extending and I'll add the links to the repos I created. I'll add some more readme and if people could look at it and we can have an online discussion rather than having it here, unless somebody wants to talk about it here. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. I would need some, I need some help. I, I, I don't really understand how to create the endpoints. I understand how to create endpoints, but not creating NSM endpoints. It's a little bit opaque to me what the YAML files would look like. Oh, okay, okay, that makes sense. So, um, so I know that we had a network service and a sort of a dummy network service endpoint example. Um, I presume that you've looked at that and found that to be less clear than you would like. Yes. So Fred, you know, um, Sergi created that simple data plane. Mm -hmm. If we could create a couple of YAML files for that so that we could use, you know, I don't know, <laughs> maybe a little more advanced in ping tone, but you know, um, I, like a web, yeah, NGX server to talking to a, a REST API and then mm -hmm. using the simple data plane as a transport. How, yep. would I set that, how would I set that up? Okay, cool, cool. Because um, then, then we'll have a complete end-to-end -end application that people can say, oh, look, here I can use... Um, it, it, becomes our hello, it becomes our hello world, basically. Yeah, 
And then if I, if I build a different data plane, I can use the same example and plug it in. And I say, look, I can swap out data planes and use the same example. And I think that starts to show the power of NSM or some of the, the features. Oh yeah, and I can swap out data planes and get the same example. Oh look, I can swap out you know, the, the network service endpoint implementation and I still get something that does its thing. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, well, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Uh, data plane transparency, that's something we, we haven't had in other endeavors, you know? And um, I mean, like, like Neutron, for example. Um, <laughs> even ODL doesn't quite have everything for data plane transparency in the release yet for, because it doesn't have the southbound for NetConf really quite in there yet. And it'd be, certainly be nice to have it in this platform. Yeah, I think we absolutely have to have it in this platform because among other things, we're going to find different people with different needs. Um, for example, um, you have people who want something that just certainly works. They don't want to do a whole lot. And they don't really care a lot about performance or latency. Um, and for those people, a simple data plane probably works great. Um, you know, and then you'll get people who care a lot about those things. And for those people, they'll want a, a more sophisticated data plane. And, and so welding to any single data plane is probably not a good thing. Um, one other thing I think we will find is that we actually have different classes of data planes in the system. So there is the sort of local data plane, the, the sort of I've got a local point to point data plane that connects two containers lo locally. That's one kind of data plane. You've got I, the, what I would call sort of the hardware data plane, which is I have an SRIOV or hardware NIC that I want to provide my network service. Um, that's a little bit different. And then you've got the remote data plane, which is the, I want to reach a pod and it's not here. Um, and, you know, I, I think those data planes may in fact, being able to plug those separately may be quite interesting. Yep. I think once we start having examples, it makes it, you know, we can actually um, test ourselves to make sure that we can actually do these things. Agreed, agreed. So, um, so any yeah, of hang on. I did want to bring up, I was trying to find my mute button. Yeah, uh, definitely. A, 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 <laughs> stop laughing. <laughs> a, a concrete example is definitely good because, you know, like I want to play with the data plane, but sometimes I just can't think of a good scenario to test out just to prove it out. And so, you know, having concrete example to say, hey, I want to connect this to that and be able to do X, Y, Z is just as so much help to be able to get in and use it with just a concrete example that you can then extend to how you want to use it later on. Uh, well, the, the, the Sergey simple uh, data plane kind of starts that it's, um, uh, you know, but uh, we need to extend that. So in the interest of, um, of time, because we have some pretty big items on the agenda. So I'm going to wrap up real quick with the this part. So just to finish up, by SROV, I don't think we've had much um, uh, movement on the packet.net side for, for this particular week. So uh, that's something that uh, we're going to have to work out. You know, do we, do we want to, to see if we can Find a, find a way to experiment with them or see if we can get a reserve device and work out like which type of reserve device will we like. There's some logistics we have to cover on, on that side before we can really, uh, before we can really test that, that assumption that, um, that it really is the BIOS issue. Uh, and so in terms of, So in terms of the, uh, going back to the, to the main agenda, uh, one of the things that we have to do is we, we have very little time before uh, the open source summit um, arrives. And uh, I wanna make sure that we have enough built up for documentations, approachability, so that we can really drive people who are interested in the community to, uh, to help participate in, in, these particular meetings, and I saw that Kyle has uh, has made the first step towards building a uh, landing page. Yes, is, is, is that correct? Yeah. yeah so. In fact, I can I can quickly share it. I mean, right now it's 
I, I mean, I'm still working on it, so it's just local, but I'm happy to give everyone a preview if they'd like. Yeah, if, if you can, if you can bring it up, uh, and I'll talk a little bit more while you're while you're getting while you're getting that set up a little bit. So yeah, hey Tom, Tom, if you could stop sharing for a second, I'll just quickly share the the website then. Cool. Okay, go ahead. I'll I'll bring it up. So a couple other things as well is I I think it would be very good for us to have someone who is uh, who is present who is willing to take notes on some of the types of questions that are that are asked. So in other words, if there's something interesting that comes up that, that looks like uh, network service meshes uh, would be well suited for, someone asks a very specific question that we may not have the answer there, you know, being able to capture that information. And then we can we can work afterwards and get it back onto the landing page with this new with with new content so that way that it, it becomes this um it, it it's something like like it always it always bothers me like you, you go into a conference and someone asks a question and says well i'll get back to you except that connection never happens and this actually you know shows a level of commitment that yes we do want to get back we do want to we do want to engage and we want to be active about about doing so and and so i think if we were to to go with <laughs> Something like that. I think, uh, I, I think that that would that, that that would that would help drive attention towards us as well. Not to mention, it would also help us for our own records and for our own information as to what type to work out what type of questions people are asking. So next time we hear that question, we we all know the answer. Yep. I mean, the other thing that I'll point out is I will have twenty minutes to talk about network service mesh at the seminar. <clears throat> and one of the things that I tend to do is put up QR codes that point to things that you want people to link to. So I will definitely be able to put up a QR code uh, for folks to reach this page, uh, which you know, people tend to take the photo with their phone and then they can reach the page. Um, just a little something, make sure the landing page itself has a QR code on it that points to itself because we can pull it up and people can take photos of the front page. Yes. <clears throat> yep. And so, so I think like we need to work out this week what information we want to put on this landing page, like what scenarios we want to discuss uh, and copy over some of the data from the repository into into a web format uh, in this scenario, which should be pretty easy because it's all most all most of our stuff is markdown. So yeah. And so it should integrate nicely. But uh, so yeah, I Sorry, go on. I was going to say one thing I was thinking we should do this week is, um, you know, I was planning to push to push this out, at, you know, as a new uh, repository, a new Git repository, um, the the website basically, and then what I was hoping we could do, you know, we can iterate that way uh, this week on it uh, before we end up, uh, excuse me, the coming week before we end up pushing it live at the end of next week. Um, because that way everything's pull requests, right? And we can have it, we can have it built that way. That way. We, can add it. we can comment that way. What, what do you all think of that? No, that, that sounds good to me. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And cool. so, so we don't, we don't have to work out right now what, what those, what exactly should be on that. I think we should rally on, on, on IRC and rally around the repository and pull requests. So, uh, so yeah. if, if this isn't already on GitHub, if uh, if we can create a repository that um, I I have the, um, the, the I have a network service mesh group, and one option is we could land it in there, and that means that we don't have to give people access to the main to the main repo, but we but we can add people uh, to that in order to um, in order to organize and uh, the the content, so that's that's one place where we could potentially live uh, to start off with. But cool. yeah, the, the main point is that yeah, we we need to have a repo that people can send their pull requests to and yeah. that we can give people access to. And um, I think I think it should be okay uh, to uh, to preempt some of the questions as well that we expect to that we expect people to see. Like we know that certain people ask certain questions often, so we should we should um, seed 
the uh, facts. the page with those with those facts. Yes. Yep. I, I agree. I agree totally. I I've got uh, I've got one more meeting after this one, but then the rest of my afternoon is free, and this is what I'm going to focus on. So so I'll definitely I'll have this pushed out and and you know in, in some form today at least, um, and then we can all iterate about how bad a designer I am and things like that, which, which is you know. Which is <laughs> Although I, I will say I'm pretty happy with this Hugo theme, actually, once I show you this, it's pretty cool and we can change whatever we want. I mean, I just went through and picked images uh, for now for different places, but yeah. yeah Hugo's cool. cool. So uh, I'll let you go off and, sh and show off the uh, the site and uh, and then we still yeah. have other things to get to after that. So we'll... Yeah, yeah. Let's let's because we're going to push this out as a Git repository. Let's just spend no more than five minutes on this, so we can still cover the rest of the the agenda. Because I could see us totally, you know, spending the next thirty minutes on this. So, <laughs> so what oh, I yeah. what I did for now, I'll just I'll just highlight some things, right? So I had to put the uh, the spider uh, up here, as Ed was uh, was mentioning to me for now. Um, for now, I just put you know a home link which obviously goes back here a link to the source our docker images if we want to have a blog and then I was going to give a landing page um, for the open source summit uh, as well where we could put a bunch of collateral and things there um, this this just has essentially a quick rundown uh, super quick um, I like how this this slide so then I have our, our problem statement uh, next uh, and Fred, thanks for, for the document. I took a lot of this right from the document that's merged in the tree. I wordsmithed a few parts to make it fit a little better. Um, so it just has essentially the problem statement. Uh, then we go into a little bit more detail on what exactly this is uh, with a link to our documentation uh, in the GitHub repository for now as well. And then on the end, I kind of put in a little blurb about our, the path to cloud native NFE. Ignore the bottom for now. I haven't gotten to this yet. But roughly that's it. So, um, and and we're free to to iterate on what we you know like 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 Frederick was talking about. We're free to iterate on what we want to put on the top <laughs> here as well and things like that. But but I really like the way this this uh, theme for Hugo kind of flows. I think it's pretty cool. I, I, I think it's good. Um, I, I think this is an excellent place to start. Um, one thing I, I would suggest that we do think about and and, and you know is making sure to broaden some of this broad a little bit more than just NFE. We absolutely do crucial things for NFE, but, but there are a lot of enterprise use cases where this is going to be really quite amazing as well. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and in fact, we can, um, I know that currently our documentation is totally on that, but, but for example, we can add additional bars down here that talk about the enterprise use cases and things like that as well. So, so definitely, I agree. Also, what about um, tab for use cases, maybe? To and totally then, and uh, exactly and I, I agree and and you know we, we definitely need more tabs and and the use case thing and, and stuff <laughs> like that. Like, I don't <laughs> think more tabs is a good, is a good so, thing. So look, think, one thing I would suggest that we actually look at is if you look if you go look around at a lot of other sort of mo more modern projects they, there are certain kinds of things that start to emerge as patterns where they'll have like a, a good one for this is um, Da, 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 da. Actually, that's no longer going. So people will often have like tabs that are like concepts, documentation. Yes. Getting you know, there, there, there's a pattern that's kind of emerging that's sort of like, what the fuck is it? Where's the documentation? How the fuck do I do something? Yep. 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 Definitely. So, uh, and I've been looking at some of those, some of those as well. Um, definitely. So, so this is, and, and, and definitely once we get this pushed out, we can all as a community iterate next week by pushing patches to this, uh, this website and tinkering with it until we get it to, to the point where we're pretty happy. And, and I, and I definitely expect we will continue to iterate on it even after, uh, the open source summit. But, but the goal next week should be to just get something that we're happy with, uh, you know, for, for that Tuesday, uh, event in Vancouver. I think also having the the types of users, so people who come there, you know, do I want to develop network service mesh? Do I want to add to network service mesh? Do I want to use it? So there's different paths for them. Yep. No, there, there absolutely there absolutely is. Um, and I, I think that's going to be crucially important because, you know, the way that somebody, like if you look at the stories, I saw this is going through the stories. If you're looking, if you're somebody who's developing an app, you have a totally different view of the world than if you are the guy who is sweating over what all goes into secure internet connectivity, for example, right? Um, 
and, and, and you actually don't want to know about each other's worlds very much. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Well, I will, I will stop sharing now. I, I've used exactly the five minutes I, I had suggested I should use. I'll let Tom go ahead and, and, and share the, uh, the agenda again, and we can keep going. Th thanks. So before we share the agenda, uh, Ed, uh, Hannah and the hardware Nicks, do you, do you want to show that off? You might be on mute, or I might be on mute. No, I'm on mute. It's the theme of the day. Um, I'm on mute. I was on mute. Too. <laughs> I I uh, say much more intelligent things when I'm on mute, though. No, my, my suggestion would be that we do the following. We kind of bounce that to the end, so that if we have time at the end, I'd be happy to walk through it. Um, but um, it's you know because it but you know but we have other business I think we also need to get to. Okay, I've bounced it to the end then. Um, Ninja but, agenda yeah, bashing. But the link is there. This is actually the story that I told resource management this week um, about managing hardware nicks. Okay, so group to test out depend the bot. Uh, so I personally think depend the bot's been doing a pretty good job. Uh, we found a one area where it didn't upgrade properly. Um, yeah, Kyle fixed that up. So overall, I'm pretty happy about it. Uh, any, anyone want to talk about their experiences with Dependabot in the past week? It appears to be dependable. But that's why it's called Dependabot. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the the one area that I that I think that uh, is not as uh, not as well, hey Kyle, did, when when the error occurred, because we did have one problem where it couldn't upgrade dependencies properly, did uh, did Dependabot open a pull request saying or an issue saying that it couldn't upgrade, or would, did you have to go to the dashboard in order to see that uh, that it wasn't working it, anymore? It 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 was something on the dashboard, and it's not you know so that that was the problem. Um, it is, they do note that, I, I forget if the Golang support is either alpha or beta, um, but, the, but I remember they, they did note that, that Golang was somewhat recent compared to some of the other dependencies um, uh, for languages. So that, that might be part of the problem, but, but that was, you're right, that was mildly annoying that I had to go uh, just look there and there wasn't a ton of, of information. However, that being said, this is a completely free service that we're using. So, um, you know, there is that as well. The other thing that I really like about the Dependabot though, is, is that the, the source code for it is, um, for the actual bot is, is completely open source. So if we ever, if we ever did hit issues or anything, we should be able to look at the source, um, should we so choose. And, and in theory, we could actually run our own version of the bot uh, hosted somewhere else if we wanted as well. So that's the other reason I kind of, I kind of like it because at least those, those options are available to us. Okay, that's, that's good to know. So if it ever becomes onerous where we have to keep looking at this dashboard to work out if these problems have occurred, then one option that we, that we have then uh, is to modify the, the code to do one of, I, one of two things. We can either have it create an issue when such a problem occurs and uh, block until it's block creating new issues until it's resolved. And the second thing we could do is have create a uh, label that that talks about build a bot, uh, build a bot's own health. Sort of like, yes, this thing is passing its CI. You know, you can have a build a bot uh, requires attention label. Exactly. And so, uh, and we hop onto the front end, front of the web page enough that when we hop on, if we see it's red, then we know we need to hop on and, and deal with it. All right. So. Uh, Ed has been working on redrafting the um, email, which is going to be sent off to the working group uh, for the network service mesh. So you have the uh, floor. Yeah, so I've gotten a lot of input and I've been trying to uh, sit down and do a redraft. I have not yet sat down and do, done a redraft. Um, mm -hmm. It's been kind of a very meeting heavy week for me. And, and so I have not actually done that redraft, but it's become really clear. It needs to get a lot shorter, a lot punchier and very focused on, um, on goals. And the, the, for the purposes of the working group, those goals need to be basically about clearly documenting the things that go into network service mesh. So basically, 
how do people, you know, basically how the architect, arch documenting the architecture, documenting the APIs for the people and things that actually plug into it and so forth. Uh, and I think this will eventually end up being quite crucial because we are going to want to have people who want to do things like external network service managers or proxy network service managers that plug into the system. We'll have people who are wanting to plug in data planes and so forth. So um, we'll definitely uh, definitely need to get that redrafted, but have not yet. Okay. So yeah, if you need any help with it, definitely let me know. And I'm pretty sure there's other people here who would love to would love to contribute. So, yep. um, and quite quite frankly, uh, anyone who wants to actually take a pen, um, I'm happy to grant edit rights to the document. And I think you know several of you already have them. So, I mean, the lovely thing about about Google Docs is they keep history, so nothing is truly lost. So please don't don't feel like I'm sitting on this work item. So for the, uh, for the draft X factor CNF, uh, I've been thinking a lot about what such a thing should, uh, should look like. So this week I'm going to have a, a, a first crack, not on, on the heuristics themselves, but based upon what uh, Tom suggested, which is to just start working on the overall, the overall goals. And so what I'll do is I'll post a message when I, when I've done the first draft of this, uh, I'll post a message to um, to the email list and ask for collaboration on this. And um, so I'm not expecting that we that we come up with any set of heuristics by the time that Open Source Summit comes out. But I do think that uh, trying to capture, you know, exactly what it is that uh, that we like what 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 do we want the world to look like uh, ourselves like what what properties do we find do we find important and you know once we once we have those then what we can do is create the set of heuristics to describe like oh you want horizontal scalability you know the this is this is what you should this is what you should look at you know you should look at how do 12 factor apps work how does how does kubernetes horizontal scaling work and what is like what's required like for for your application to like what properties your application need to have and i think what's what is going to end up happening is that we're going to have people who have different sets of needs they're not going to have the needs for everything for, for all of those goals but if you have an, if you have a need for Data plane must uh, must your data plane needs to be fast, cannot have anything any intermediaries because of the performance requirements, and it needs to be horizontally scalable. Then it's like we we can they can look at the various heuristics and just and just learn from it, and then that'll help them make better design decisions as they move forward. So that's the sort of like pattern that I'm that I'm thinking of at this point because I think there's too many ways too many types of things we're trying to that we're, that we're that we're talking about that until we have a very solid definition of what a CNF even is which we haven't even gone to yet in the community then you know you're saying hey here's yours to create them doesn't doesn't make as much doesn't make as much sense but saying these are the type of goals that people care about I think can help drive some of the some of the conversation in that space does does that make sense I think that makes total sense. Yep. Cool. So I'll I'll have a uh, I'll have something on that uh, soonish. Um, let's see. I mentioned before I don't think anyone did anything with the SROV this particular week because we've been focusing on other on on other things. So, uh, although th there was something for, uh, on Taylor with reaching out to Jacob. So is, was there any movement on that? Um, I don't know. Do you have it in Watson? Um, I, I actually know that I text him, but he hasn't responded. That, that's okay. That's okay. He's off today. Um, I do know that I did actually dig up in the course of talking to Sergey. Um, so there, there is two interesting things came up. One is there is a list of which NICs are with which flavor at Packet. Um, and so that, that actually is helpful. But the second thing that I dug up is the availability of flavors varies radically by site in Packet, 
And so one of the issues that we were having was the only flavor that was available in the Canadian site that um, that was where Sergey was trying to work um, was not a particularly helpful flavor in terms of getting this stuff working. Um, and we discovered, for example, their San Jose site and of all odd things, their Newark site have the broadest variety of flavors available. Uh, and so it becomes easier to figure out which NICs uh, you want to use and so forth. I, I understand their San Jose site, but I, I'm really confused by their Newark site. I mean, what server wants to go to Newark? Yeah, just to just to be clear, so um, Packet Ed, uh, not to be confused with the one and only Ed, um, is mentioned that uh, there's no that even even in the even in the site there may be that there may be variance in in hardware and configuration. So uh, so I, I don't think we can rely like even that that document uh, it doesn't fully coincide with the information that, that I was told about how oh. you can pick an instance and end up with a, with potentially a different card. So that's, well, a, that's something we should be careful with. We'll have to figure out and work with them so on that and, and sort of see what can be done because, <coughs> you know, I, I, you do actually want, if some people do want to be able to try and actually run this stuff, and I think bare metal public cloud is gonna be important for a lot of consumers that we would have for SRIOV. And if you're, if you're running bare metal public cloud, you damn well need to get what you expect. That area. Completely agree. And I also think that what we should do is we should work, try to work out who the right person is who controls that particular decision and see if Absolutely. we can convince them to, um, to flip that decision around and say, look, you want to tackle these particular groups. And then you, it appears that you've mentioned you want to head off in this direction. And if that's true, then you really need to enable this feature and take a look at it. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, I mean, quite frankly, like it, all it really needs to be is there some way of getting a deterministic result if you need a deterministic result, right? If, if they could literally just give you a little checkbox that says you are guaranteed the advertised Nick when you select the flavor, they can still have diversity in their in their in their underlying uh, hardware because you're working all of that out as hard and expensive. But but if I click X Y Z flavor and it's supposed to have A B C Nick, um, and I click the little checkbox, I'm damn well going to get A B C Nick. Um, I, I imagine people would be even willing to pay a slight premium for it. Yeah. So let, let's work out what we want to to tell them and see if we can see if we can convince, like work out who that person is we need to talk to and see if we can convince them that that's an important feature. And uh, if it's on their roadmap, it's something that, you know, that they have to, that they have to do. And if it's, and if they haven't added it to their agenda of tasks to perform, then, you know, that, that'll be good feedback for them. Um, Okay, so uh, let's. We don't have too much time, so let's talk about the extending network service mesh and whether it should be in or out of a tree. I think I yeah, guess, yeah, we're discussing earlier. So, I mean, why don't we just go, go through that action item I had on the um, to do board? Could you follow the link to the action items, Thomas? Yeah, sure. Sorry. Where are we? Issues. It's towards the top. Oh, yeah. I think I already have that out, but anyway. A little bit of redundancy in my, way, in my pages is fine. Okay, we're looking at the... Um, Each guidelines, yeah. review, guidelines for extending NSM. I also right, made a, right. a to-do there under the last, the second from last bottom to do, I had a, I wrote something separate, but separation concerns and okay, different we can audiences. Look at that. Separate out the concerns for the audience MSM to make it more accessible. Come on. Oh, that comes up in a different page the way I click on it. I should have, is that this one? Where'd it go? Are we just looking at the pull request at this point, or? Yeah, I would, I would just leave it now and let's focus on the pull request, the needs of you. Yeah, pull, pull request 180. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
247. 247, yeah, we ha that's over here. Yeah. Okay. So l let's, let me add the link to the new repo I created with the um, template generator stuff and have a discussion there. I mean, Kyle, you're the one who had comments and I, I, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not sure which way is the best way to do this, but I'm open. Yeah, I mean, I, I, and by the way, thanks for doing this work. I, you know, I spent a bunch of time reviewing this and, and uh, it's really, really excellent work. So um, my, my main comments were, in fact, I was the one who brought up the in tree versus out of tree. Yeah. Um, and the reason that came up actually, John, was when I was reviewing it, you know, the directory structure you had, um, I was confused at first because it didn't match what we had in the network service mesh repository. Um, but then it made sense to me when you indicated that you were kind of thinking of almost a clean slate out of tree, uh, what the directory uh, structure would look like. And, and from that perspective, it made sense. And that, that was why I said, well, we should probably spend some time discussing with the broader community. You know, do we want to do out of tree or, or in tree for these things? So, so what I did was, yeah, took your out of tree idea. I wrote a script that basically uses um, the work Sergey had done and plus pulled a bunch of the existing make files and stuff and created an out of tree template structure. So now you can basically run a script and it'll create an out of tree NSM for you to go and do your own work. And then you can do a build against the old link to the NSM main repo to basically create a separate plug-in for you. So I mean, in terms of the oh. out, of tree, out of tree question, I think there are two really crucial points that we have to make sure we do no matter what we decide, right? And the two really crucial points are number one, uh, we, need to remain, we need to remain welcoming, meaning that for reasonable -ish kinds of things, we are welcoming to having an appropriate place to put them in tree. Um, and number two, we have to remain flexible, meaning it should be possible to do work out of tree if for any reason you decide you want to work out of tree. And yeah. As long as well, you do, everything else is gravy. Definitely, and I and and I will I will indicate that uh, that past experience, you know, uh, years back in Neutron, um, in tree for things got got complicated just just because you know we ended yeah. up with like, so so that 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 got unwieldy at that point. Now I I don't know do, do most. CNI plugins, for example, live out of tree, or is there a central, they, uh, or, or how does that work? They mostly live out of tree, um, and so I, I guess the, the thing the thing I want to be careful about is um, I want to I want to be avoid the appearance of there being the one true data plane. Um, and yes. Some, <clears throat> and, <clears throat> but at the same time, we have to do some data plane work in tree just to get shit done, right? And right. And, and so I don't want. I, I agree with you that you can get out of hand at some point. Um, and if we do get out of hand, then we, we have to sort of figure out how we're going to handle that reasonably. Um, but we're, we're, we're far from the day of getting out of hand. So I think we need to remain vigilant about getting out of hand. But I wouldn't want someone to come and look at network service mesh and say, for example, oh, that's only if you're using VPP. Yeah, right? I, yeah. I, think, I think we need uh, in tree, they extend on Sergey's examples for in tree work for some of the popular data planes that people in the open source world, like for example, Open vSwitch and and um, and VPP and and then maybe a few others. Um, but um, certainly, there be people who want to work with proprietary data planes or fork their own in anticipation of doing something open source later or whatever corporate agendas, and they're welcome to do that. So. The, the other thing I, that I want to be careful with as well is that if someone's trying to do something in tree, then that means that someone from, we, we either have to give those communities commit access to merging their own stuff, which gives commit access to much more, more. or we have to we end up being the gate, the gatekeepers on an area where we really shouldn't be the gatekeepers. And so I, I think, I think mm. we should be very careful with, uh, with entry from, from that respect. Like right now it's, it's probably okay. Uh, yeah. But, you know, it, we, in, in the, in the long run, like even, even the sample data plane, 
I, I would argue that we, you know, we should, we should eventually push them all into their own repos repositories that people can, can. Uh, yeah, at some, some point, I doubt if we're quite ready for that. It seems like if you did, if you pushed them into too many different places too soon, then people would just have trouble keeping track of all of them and finding them. I, I think yeah. the problem just now is that, I mean, I had to do some detective work to figure out what all the files were for creating a sample data plane and where they were in the tree. And that's why I created my own oh. sort of template tree. So it, it took me, you know, a day of futzing around to, to get it right. So if everybody has to spend a day, well, I, I knew my way around a little bit already. So, I mean, Emily coming in blind who says, oh, I want to you know, jump in and create a sample data plane. It's going to be a steep learning curve and they are going to push stuff in. It's probably going to clobber other stuff because even the make files, you know, Sergey edited the main make files and, a bunch, and the Docker files to make it all work. So to create the way this, that's why, that's why I confused Kyle by creating a different directory structure for the samples so that we don't, so people creating samples don't have to touch the same files as the core infrastructure, which, you know, would also cause a lot of problems because, you know, well, I, 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 <laughs> I assume that, and, and I'm aware of that because I tried to do some of the same thing. I took all the sample data plane code, tried to figure out where it all was and got to that point. And it is a little bit complicated because there's a lot of files in different places. So I, but that's useful. I figured that once you did, you followed what you're talking about, John, and then people, if that data, if that thing were to be put in a pull request, then they put it all back to a fork or something and then put in a pull request. And that's, that's the workflow that I envisioned in my head for what I was going to do. Um, I, yeah, I, I put it where it was convenient to do the development and then put it back uh, and then test it before I did the pull request. I don't know. I mean, that's just my own peculiar way of doing things, but it kind of made sense. I, I don't know whether early in the development phase, it quite justifies sort of creating public repos of this stuff, you know, spread all over the place. I'm just worried people wouldn't be able to find it and might detract so, from the um, uh, from the usefulness or whatever or uh, degree of, of um, open source uh, what do you call it uh, review that different ones have gotten or whatever different governance roles or, you know it, it, it could get uh, I think to have a certain amount of it in this project is probably a good idea for a while I'm, I'm not questioning people's way of and I think that's separate from what workflow you use as an individual developer in your own space, fork, whatever you're going to do, you know. Um, but at some point, when you get ready for a pull request, we should converge on something, uh, uh, for at least for the first four, five, six, maybe, that go back in here. I don't know. That's just my thought, just to keep things kind of consistent and in-house for a while and then uh, and then let whatever happens happens after that just a question of when yeah i think something we can do that'll that'll help in the future as well is you know we sh if we identify you know where what files are where necessary they've been scattered around um, and and so on we, we can start to structure the code base in such a way that uh, this becomes an easier an easier process. And worst, well, one one potential path towards this as well is uh, we 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 could potentially expose out some form of a of an API or something similar and use some you know we can use some form of uh, of uh, like hooks or something or something similar that knows how to abstract a lot of this away so that way that it really becomes very easy for a developer to type in the code in the appropriate sections and and get the results that they're that they're expecting and so you know so i think that you know we, we should we should see like the first few data planes or the first few uh integrations to see like how how those how that works and how that goes and then once we understand what people were really, what problems people were really having, and and um, and how network service mesh itself is also growing, 
then we can start to look at such uh, right. at such an abstraction. If you, if you take a look at what I did, I'll I'll post it. I did essentially what you're talking about, Fred, and in, in that I created a, a tree that had um, all the files for sample data plane and make and cut down to make files that only built the sample data plane. So that could be in tree or out of tree. So I think it, it makes the, um, it, it kind of solves both problems. So you could do it in tree if you wanted and if you do it out of tree if you want to, there's no um, restriction. It allows people to, you know, do a pull, as Fred said, you know, as Tom said, bring a, do a pull request and then, you know, push it back in again. And then we're fairly confident that that pull and that change request is only just touching the sample code. It won't touch anything else, which makes reviewing it a lot easier. Cool. So we've hit the top of the, uh, oh, of the hour. Um, if you can do one thing for me, as a, uh, if you can add in um, uh, a GitHub issue talking about uh, providing an easier way for these integrations to, to work, just you know, it doesn't have to be code or anything, just say, just so that we have something tracking this. And in terms of uh, Hannah and the hardware, Nix, uh, the, there's a link on the, um, on the agenda and uh, if we have time, do you, we can we can cover it next week in more in more detail, and people can have that way give you time to look at it and, and ingest it, and then bring your bring your questions so that that way we can improve the uh, the narrative. Uh, will Will that work for you, Ed? Ed is triple muted again. Yeah. Yep, that that works for me. Cool. Yeah, and I'm really excited about handling the hardware next, so I'm a little sad that we ran out of time, uh, but. I'm deeply I, I amused that I appear to be writing highly technical children's stories. <laughs> it's, it's, well, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's effective. So, yeah, look at that. Think, and, and if you want uh, to hear the presentation, there is now a link to the, the the video where I presented to resource management. So, great. And uh, with that. We'll close up the meeting and uh, thank you everyone for, for attending and we'll see you again next week. Bye everybody. Bye.